Welcome back to Railroads Online. I am Rever, and we are standing right in front of our locomotive, the mighty Heisler. Big torque, not much speed, <laughs> but better than the Climax, that's for sure. Some people did comment that they thought the Climax front axle was broken. Just so you know, in a gearing situation, that shouldn't matter too much on the speed. I'm not doubting that the thing is broken, but at the same time, because it's just go so slow. Again, is that realistic? But it's almost like switching in and out of four-wheel drive, right? I mean, this thing could have four-wheel drive. Would, the gearing is what matters. So this thing has a similar kind of gearbox in it right here. And if you look, there's a drive shaft towards the back and a drive shaft towards the back and that, or towards the front. That's exactly, other than the fact it's got eight wheels and my truck only has two, my four-wheel drive truck is set up practically the same exact way. So you have a transmission into a gearbox that lets you disengage the front. Well, if the front's not spinning, the, the back is geared the same way. You're getting just as much power out of the engine. You know, so it's really just a matter of gearing. That wouldn't necessarily slow down the train, not unless there was some mechanical function that was broken that was rubbing or causing friction in the, in the locomotive. But So it doesn't necessarily make sense that just because that axle isn't spinning it would be slower at least not that slow anyhow so anyway while i was up here i wanted to talk about something else i got another comment that said this is in some ways to do with the last we did some repairs up here so i'm assuming a lot of you watched the repairs video but if you didn't we improved our entrance let's run all the way down this way because there's not much to see there uh, we'll jump over the train right here so our train track used to go a little bit further this was our markers and you can see we're diverting Right about here was where, on well, this piece right here is where our track used to go, somewhere down like this. Actually, this is a new piece I put in, but so our track used to come in and go down here, so we made it much nicer and much smoother if you didn't watch that in the last episode. But that caused a comment. Some of what I was doing here is because I derailed in the last video, the last 200 barrels of oil video, and I had two good suggestions. I, I get a lot of good suggestions from you guys all the time. Thank you very much. I do appreciate them. And I hope they help other people that may read them at times too, of course. But we could make this turn less steep or less uh, sharp if we went back into here some, right? So there's a nice big plateau that's actually quite a bit wider in here. So we could spin down into this area and come back out just so you guys are aware of that. I'd like to see, first of all, I kind of ran out of time with my repairs video, but I would like to see how this performs and if we still have problems if I unload the back of the car first. So that was my other suggestion, was the fact that I was lo unloading the front part of the car. Well, there was a lot of light cars right here and very heavy cars over there. So when I pulled to go forward or backward, whatever exactly I was doing, I hit the brakes, there wasn't enough weight on the cars that were on the front of the train right here on the turn. And that's exactly why I would have derailed right there. And that does make a lot of sense from a physics point of view to me. So, so anyway, uh, keep that in mind. Try to unload the back. I'm not sure how I would do that up here. And I can see where having a nice big loop down there would be even better. So we are up here now just to change subjects completely on you guys because I wanted to do something a little bit special and different. Another suggestion that I got was to go on and look at the online mapping tool, right? So we could map this out. Let me come up here right now, right where we're at. And I'm going to hit save game into my slot one, right? You'll see this is the 18th of December. We'll go back pretty early in the morning for me. It's when I wake up because I'm an early bird, old man. And we will, uh, well, I guess I can just, yeah, do we want to leave the session? I'll see. Let me, uh, let me get opened into this other thing on the online, and I'll show you what it is, and then we'll come right back. Okay, here we are. I'm not sure that there's another one, but this is the one I see people talking about on the Steam forums, and it's pretty cool, I have to admit. I kind of wish I'd, I'd seen people talking about it before, but, you know, life is busy, I got enough, and I tend to keep things vanilla because I know a lot of other people can have problems with mods and you know I, I if it's vanilla for the playthrough you guys can add more later on 
but everybody sees it as it is. It's just my tendency with making these videos. Nothing against mods and that stuff. But what we want to do is we want to upload the save game. So I'll tell you where your save game is. So what I did, this is where my save game is. So it's on my C drive users or i'll let me click here so you can see users admin is the name of the user on this computer and then app data local arr saved save games so i'm not sure how well you guys can can read that but you can find it search online and you know i know in the steam forums other people tell you where that is so i have these saves now i also have a little usb hard drive made by patriot company that's why it's called patriot f and it's RO save games. And I just do this periodically to to save it. So I saved it this morning. So it's been a couple days. The 16th was the last time. But I want to take slave slot. I'm oh, sorry. Save, save slot one and copy. And I'll just overwrite it. And like I said, this is what I do pretty regularly just to make sure that I don't lose my save. Because if I lose my save, there goes the whole or, you know, it causes a lot of problems with the YouTube streaming. It's not, it's worse, in other words, than just a regular person losing their save, in a sense, in that respect. So there we go. We have slaves, save slot one. And then what I did in the past was I called it rever slot, but we'll come up with a new name. Yeah, we want to delete that file. So I'm going to come up and then I'm just going to copy. Oops. I could have just probably pasted it again, right? So it comes up with a copy there. And I'm just going to call it wherever save. All right. So now you guys need, if you want to look at my map, you'll need to remember that wherever save part. Because now we'll go and let's get, open this back up. All right. So we're back on here. Now we're going to upload the save game, right? Choose, uh, you can see where I did it before. Let me choose another file. And I'm going to do wherever save. Open. I want to say, yes, make it public. All right, so I hope that doesn't cause extra save games for them. I hope they delete the abandoned ones out, but I don't know what happens with that. I couldn't see a way to delete that other one. I was going to, but hopefully, again, hopefully they have a limiting factor. I'm sure they do. So let's upload that. I'll put this link in the description if you haven't figured that out yet. And there we go. So there is our save game. Now, I don't, oh, there we go. I was going to say, I don't see any railroads. So let's see where we're at right now is over here by the iron mine, right? And you can see the Heisler sitting right there. Now it doesn't, let's see, what does it say on info? Delivery task. So you have all this different stuff in here, which I think is pretty cool. I don't know that I would do any of this stuff. I'm keeping it all tracked. So like they're saying where you need firewood. I could definitely see where it's, oops, where it's helpful. I need to do this. I want to see, can you look at the industries? Let's see. Show industry labels, coal mine. It would be really cool if it would tell us. Maybe it does, and and I'm just not that familiar. Maybe it does tell us someplace. Like, is how much stuff is in the coal mine? Is that if we look, change background trees, locos and carts. Yeah, so it's saying just show stuff or not. This is edit. I don't want to edit anything. I guess you could maybe even edit your save. Curves. Oh, yeah, look, we can do curves. Let's see. Uh, well, let's just, yeah, I don't want to do all the curves. Let's, let's do. So I guess the tighter the curve. Yeah, there you go, right? So it's kind of a little hard to see there, but it's a 30% curve thir at 37 meters. So that's a that you know like I would give you a good idea of exactly what your tight turns are or whatnot. So you get the idea, I think. I mean, you can play around with this yourself, and you can look at mine, right? So you should be able to remember that rever save, capital R and capital S there, and then uh, you should be able to take a look and even download it at some point on that main page. It said to download. So I was wondering if we could see expansion tasks. Okay, not sure why they're telling me to do that, but I'm sure there's some logic. Player info. Yeah, let's look how much. Okay, yeah. So 
Yeah, I'm not sure if you like I, for me, I would like to see the biggest thing that would be helpful to me is if it would tell me how much stuff was at the coal mine, <laughs> you know, rather than me have to run all the way over there to figure it out, especially because my spreadsheet is often somebody forgets to update my spreadsheet. Darn them. All right, so let's close that and then edit. What does edit give us? Rolling stock, trees, curves, players, industries. Aha. <laughs> yes, this is it, isn't it? Yep. So the logging camp. I think, let me look at my spreadsheet over here. By the way, here's my spreadsheet. I keep talking about this spreadsheet for you guys. Well, there you go, right? So we had, this is how much stuff I'm supposed to have. Now, this is disagreeing with me, isn't it? Yeah, you know what, though? Has not updated, right? So I didn't update that. I'm curious if I go back. That certainly could be right. Well, let's say that if it's right, which I have no reason to doubt. Look, he has zero stuff in the coal mine coal mine output because i know i just emptied it out completely zero in the out iron mine does that make yeah look i have zero there which would smelter might have been updated yep 40 and 50 and two so there we go so this is that's great that's that's perfect because that that is wonderful like that saves you going everywhere you know and then we have a hundred you know logs and a hundred yeah i got the logs are full and then i got the beams full what is this output that's a little bit messed up oh the logging camp oh no you know what i'm doing the wrong thing yeah i don't even keep track of the logging camp oops sawmill let me hit control z what was yeah see the sawmill output is 49 beams and 100 100 logs so that's logs there so we have 100 logs input and then i have yeah, 100 lumber and 49 beams. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, no, I like that. <laughs> I have to go update everything. And you can see how, like, if you're, you know, rather than running all the way across your map, just get your save game out, load it into here. Let me save that because that should be accurate, I'm assuming. And I'd, I can get rid of my little note. Not updated. I remember I didn't update it. So no firewood yeah this is you know the coal mine now has zero so i need to update that right oops so there we go yeah that's that's pretty cool these other ones let's just see the oil field real quick i don't want to spend too much time you guys get the idea i'm sure where is oil field f10 what does that mean i don't know what f f number 10 f number 11 is that Oh, oh, you know what? That's uh, firewood places. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's the oil field. 30 tools, and then we have 108. Yeah, that should be... Yep, 30 tools, 108. Each time I'm doing it, I'm getting an extra 10 tools. So I've taken three trips down there. Three sets of, of, of cars down there. Yeah, that, neat. I'm very happy with that. Refinery, 1 and 22. Cool. All right, that's saved. Let me just... Yank that back off the screen. And then we can get rid of edit. Yeah, is there anything else good in edit? Yeah, I'm sure there are. So you can actually edit the amount of stuff you have. Look, I can edit my money. Yeah, that's, I didn't know that. I don't, I don't care to cheat like that, but. Yeah, neat. So there you go. So you can now see my map. We want to, let's take a look real quick at what we have. So this is our area for the coal mine. There's our bridge. Let's, let's go down the coal mine real quick. There's like a little section of track where it used to go sharper. So you can see how I, I smoothed it out a little bit. Let me get up into this sharp area. Yep, this is the grades. I did notice that my steepest grade is actually on the iron mine trail. Let's see. Yeah, and see, this is where, remember I was talking about I was going to put markers up? See the marker right there? And there should be another one. Or is that a marker? Is that What is that? Yeah, there you go. There's my markers that I put in to, sh to warn me that I'm going to get going too fast. And if you look, sure enough, we go down this 4% slope. We're, we're getting going fast. And then I put another marker because by the time I get down to here is when I'm going really quick. And then this was the turn that I was tending to derail on. Now, that's pretty steep right there. But this is cool. You can really see. And this is, by the way, I think the steepest I noticed. 8%. So this is back on the way up to the iron mine, right? We have two lines that kind of parallel each other. 
All right, then they come down. This is the new switch I rebuilt. So you can imagine like the old one like pulled a lot tighter right in, well, right in the same area somewhere. So this one's like swung out a little bit more and I wonder why that's red. Is that normal for the switches to be colored like that? There's no switch here. This is when we come, this, this I thought was pretty steep, but I think we leveled it out quite a bit. It's still 5.5, so that's, that's pretty serious. And this is where, this is the part that I call the sleeper because it's like four, but you can get going really fast on that. It gives you a little kick. And then again, back down here, this is going up through that cut that they made. There's 8%. Like six percent, yeah, I, I do, and I want to work on this. I think I could. I think this is up and down. I think we could make that a lot smoother. There's my iron mine. Let's just take a real quick overlook. Like I said, I don't want to spend too much time. We do need to get back to driving trains, but pretty cool. I can see there's the cook sitting there. He's all loaded up with iron, ready to go. Once we get done this delivering this coal that I just loaded up. Yeah, what's our okay? So I have the two bridges kind of messing up our writing here. So these numbers that are sticking a little further are the current bridge. So our old bridge was like five, right? And then when it's right in the current bridge, it's like 4.2. So we reduced that from a and then this look, this was even six right here. So we took it to a steady look four the whole way up. So instead of going up and down, this is a three and a five. We did a lot steady by building that big, huge bridge out there. Neat. I, I really like this. This is cool. I, I thank you for the suggestion that kicked me over the end. So then here we go. This is what the sawmill looks like. All right. There's our big rail yard. And this was the grand intersection, which isn't, well, I guess it's still a, a pretty big and complicated intersection. There's our new loop that goes in and out to the, to the logging camp over here. And then there's our, our separate line that, that goes out into the main line I, I this is probably the busiest line we have right here this north south line that goes from the sawmill and then this is our freight depot loop but then our sawmill line comes down here yeah this i want to straighten that out you can see where you know it's, it's kind of right on that turn but there's no reason i can't put that switch up a little bit further and then come off you know a little bit different but then make this a bit straighter there's our anyway intersection. Looks pretty pretty clean, doesn't it? Well, from the air, <laughs> you can see why. I, mean, I can see why people talked about doing a roundabout there. But you know, the only thing about the roundabout is I think you're going to need more. It's going to be a lot bigger by the time you make a full roundabout to go any which way. So your debate to me is having to run all over the place to do switches. This is nice and compact and tight. And there we go. There's our rail siding down by the iron ironworks with our with our cars sitting in there. And then we have the Climax. <laughs> yeah, good old Climax. He doesn't have many cars on there. I guess I cut down on the numbers. Oh, that, that's right, because he just has the... He just has the f Tier 1 flatbeds and the other... Whatever it is that we need to take stuff over to the oil field. So when I come back down with all the, the logging cars, like right, right now, we're going to come down with those lot more iron we could decide to hook those cars back up to the climax and then send them on their way but neat there's our oil field nothing too dramatic there and then if we come over we haven't spent too much time over here at the refinery and look we went right up to like the hill you can see the gradient lines yeah, it definitely makes you wonder. Like, when you see this, too, it gives you a better idea of where you can go with things. All right, so let's, uh, let me just check out one other thing. Yeah, there we go. There's the coal mine that we were just at. See, there's that area we could loop further down into here. You know, they gave us this big flat spot. And I think most of my tracks is largely following what they would want you to do, right? I, I didn't do any kind of real craziness to... This is why a lot of people want to try to build up over this mountain ridge right here. You can see, but we're down at 500 and this mountain ridge is like 600. Right? Like, so some people have like snuck through here where it's 400, 500, right? And then other people have gone up over the iron mine to get to the coal mine. I chose to just take the long and in, I guess you could almost call it intended route. Maybe. I mean, I say intended because it's pretty obvious that they... 
they manipulated the ground to make this a reasonable trip up here, kind of most of the way that I went. I'm sure you might be able to drop down to the riverbed, but yeah, that would be kind of an interesting... Yeah, you could definitely drop down to that riverbed and then come up. Yeah, come up a little more directly. The problem is you're going from like 400 to 600 right here. That's the other side, I know, but this is... This is like 500 and some right here, and you're all the way down at... This is saying 400, so I don't even know what the riverbed is. It's, yeah, it's probably around 400. Yeah, so anyway, well, let's let's zoom out. I don't know how well you guys can see. You can take a look at my thing, in case you don't, don't want to go to the website and take a look at this. Now, if I hit the back button, I should be okay. So where was the... Oh yeah, that search. So we should let's let's just double check if we do rivers. Huh. Yeah, I don't know why I can't see it. Well, let me know if you guys can see it. Maybe it's let's go back to here and yeah, I don't I don't think I need to do anything or I shouldn't need to do anything to let me know if I didn't do it right. Download, save. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, but you'd have to be able to get to it first. Okay, river. Well, you know what? Let me do this. All right, here's my little... my little notes that I was going to use to... I will save a link, and I don't know. Let's just go to another page. Well, I already... I don't need to copy it again. Let's just go here and see. Yeah, there you go. I'm assuming it'll load up, right? Let's give it a sec. It does take an extra second, I notice. There, so then you guys should be able to hit edit and download the save if you wanted to do that. But otherwise, you can just look at it and there you go. That's That's cool. Anyway. All right, enough of this. Uh, let's get back to driving trains, but I hope you enjoyed it. And, and I did. I was It was a surprise. I, I wasn't expecting something to be so well done. So hats off to the creator of this. They deserve their, their kudos, no doubt. All right, I'll see you back in the train. I just threw some more wood in the firebox of the heister, but here we are back in game, of course. Um... As we expected, we have zero, like we did nothing up here. Zero of everything. So we were very accurate. Very happy with that little map tool. And I did want to mention that I went to look back, and if you, for some reason it just named that Rever. So, you know, if you do want to search for it, you can. I, I'll include the link, of course, and I, I don't think that'll change or anything. But uh, if, you, if you do search for the map Rever, you should be able to download it and take a look at it. So what I want to do, let's take a look at the map. Now that we're down at the coal mine there, right? We have this plain old map compared to that fanciness we just had. And I need to drive this stuff all the way over to the ironworks. So up to the smelter and then down to the ironworks. Uh, so a long trip for a short distance, if that makes sense. <laughs> As the crow flies, it's very short, but very long the way we have to do it. We've taken this trip before. I really don't expect any issues. I think I'm going to drag the heister all the way down there. If I have some problems, I will come back and get you guys. But as we looked at the map, you'll note that up by the smelter, we have those 26 cars of iron. And I will take that trip with you guys. So let me go take this one by myself. I'll just ride down there, drop that off, and then I'll come back up to the smelter. And we'll park this guy back in his parking spot. And then I will meet you guys there. You know, so I'll see you in a few minutes. We are gliding down the hill, coming into the smelter. So I've just dropped off the coal down at the ironworks. And by the way, my apologies for probably the numerous times that I didn't catch it in editing that I call the ironworks the iron mine. Hopefully you guys figure out what I mean. It seems to have a mental deficiency with those two terms. But if you look, our fire temperature is down to 55. So this one definitely uses a little bit more wood. I don't know that it burns it any faster but it definitely goes slower, so you're traveling a longer time, and it does use a slight bit more wood than the Cook Mogul would. 
Now, having said that, when I was coming down from the iron coal mine, it used about the same amount because I wasn't really, I wasn't going slow because it's all downhill, right? So we're going to have to stop up here. But once we flip these switches and get them right, the next trip, which is the more exciting one in my opinion, where we're going to be taking the 20 some, uh, 26 cars of iron down to that iron works. We should be good to go with our switch flipping. All right now, I just pulled out the other way and then came back down from the coal mine, so I need to do some extra flip flipping, which kind of fits because we also want to make sure we go in the easy way to back this thing up, which I guess is the only way because we don't really have a we don't have a loop in here, right? Like you can't go around and around in circles in here. So if you don't go in the right way to back in here, then you'd have to pull in or pull back out and turn around. All right, so this one needs to go this way. This one I want to go this way. And that's what I was curious about. And then these seem right, right? They should be fine. Yeah, because we want to go on this bypass circuit. And then just to make sure, no, nope, this one, I don't think this one's right. This one's right because it's pushing us into our parking spot as opposed to where the cook mogul is. But this one would be a flipper. And in the flipper sense, in this case, I mean, this one would flip us in the air if we tried to come in the wrong way. All right, so there we go. So we're good to go on the switches. So we'll pull right in here, back in. Uh, you know what I want to do? Let's do this. See, smart, thinking ahead. Because I almost forgot. Let's go ahead and throw some some fire in here. Now I have had some issues with the fire in the Heisler there. This one I almost never miss. Look, see, five in, fifty heat. Now we can get another three. All right, so we might as well get all those going. Good. And then this guy, did I forget to put more heat in? Yeah, I really should have thrown some more heat in him. Huh? I think we'll have enough to get going, but hopefully we'll have enough to back up too. Really would have been smart to throw. Well, this is a steep, steep spot right there, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit of a waste, but we'll try to throw five in there. Let's see. Now, do we get all of these in here? Most of the time I do, but yeah, that time I did. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we lost our water temperature, so that was. Bit of a mistake. We we'll get going here, and hopefully most of it's downhill, but that won't help us necessarily. But it will keep our boiler pressure up, I guess. So we'll, we'll try to use gravity as much as we can to get in there. I don't want to go too fast on this hill, but it is a nice turn. I mean, we've done a nice job in with our third <laughs> third edition of this intersection. So I did see, I do think I see at times things bouncing around a little. And it didn't dawn on me before that those cars being lighter in the front would make a difference. But that really, I could definitely see that. Yeah, you know, watch out for hitting your brakes too fast on a turn like that. But I don't want to get going. Just knock it down a little bit, right? I think we'll be all right. And yeah, we'll just take that off. We should have a nice, pretty quick slide all the way over there. Having to use our boiler pressure, we're all the way up to 33 temperature. And then we'll be ready for the big guy. Get back into the cook. And as far as this guy goes, I think yeah, one of the reasons I just did that trip was to see how he performed on the whole trip. And he is definitely a bit slower on the southern part of the trip where it's nice and flat and the cook could really get going other than that just riding back up and down to the coal mine itself from here really he's not a bad train to use because you're not really i mean it is slower don't get me wrong but it's not you don't feel like it's terrible because on the downhill run it doesn't make hardly any difference on the uphill run a lot of times we're, we're not really going overly fast anyway on those uphills certainly like i said it is slower i'm not saying that but 
I didn't feel bad about it because it's got a lot of torque and if you want to stop along the way, you got no problems. So if you were, I could see where if you were doing a lot of cars, this guy could be better for going up to the coal mine or the iron mine with that extra torque it's got. So let's get backed in. I guess, I don't know, I guess we should rehook these guys, huh? Just so we know. I'm not sure that it matters. If I don't rehook them, oh, I didn't look for a link. Yeah, maybe we'll just leave them. I can always redo it. Redo it at some future point when we're not on the... When we're not live and record... Well, we're not live, but when we're not recording. Yeah, this guy definitely has plenty of target and would make a really good yard working thing because it's not... doesn't have the separate tender. I feel like it would be... It would just be a good train to use if you wanted a yard jockey. Better than the Climax because it's got a little bit more speed, you know. And then again, if you really wanted to pull heavy loads, now I don't know are the are the iron ore cars heavier than these other cars? Wonder. Give it a little bit of break just so we don't slam into that other guy. I guess I'm not even going to try to... I'm almost going to leave them not attached so that I remember what happened. Because I'm not sure how much more I'm going to be playing until they add some more content. Now, they did have a notice where they said they were going to add more content. So do we need to do anything? How about some switching? We need to do the flipper. So before we get in here, let's... So we're just going to go straight out and around, right? So we need to get this guy flipped to accept us out that way. And then we need to get this guy flipped to accept us this way. But then after that, we should be good to go. Right? And even all the way down, we just came from there. So I know all the switches are flipped. And there shouldn't be any issue with the way I went in or out. At least as far as I know. Obviously, we're testing, <laughs> testing a lot of train cars but all right so let's hop in here how much fire do we have i want to get it a yeah, super full so we can do 80 total so i can put another five in there that'll get us up to like the max just in case yep so 80 is the most fuel we can hold and then our fire we're plenty of water at this point let's put it in forward uh, you know what, uh, let's jump in the gun a little bit. I wouldn't have set any of these cars. It'd just be the last couple I might have set. Oh, no, you know what, I didn't set them because we're on the hill. Let's see how this works out. All right. Now I remember I, I didn't set any of the brakes because we're on this pretty steep downhill. So I'm assuming that that would mean we should be good with all of our links, right? The reason I set the brakes on the last couple cars and then bunch them up is so they stay bunched up. But if they're on this hill, now we could say, oh, look, they're all moving together, but they could just be sliding down the hill. So we'll keep a close eye as we pull out of here. Do it nice and slow. Make sure we get out. Yeah, it definitely... It's, it's interesting, having looked at that map earlier, I think it would give you a good perspective. Like, I might be able to see in here better. I definitely want to take a closer look before I start doing more rail repairs at times, just to see see what it looks like on that map. And I think that might give you a better perspective or a little bit different perspective that might help. You know, you might look at it and say, oh, no, you really should be swinging around this way, or, you know, and that would be better. I'm not sure that that's true at all, but certainly I think what we could I could do to make those turns. I was thinking about this: if we made this one and then brought this other one out as the other part of the switch, like in other words, we can make the main loop a little bit wider and then have a switch that would send you inwards, as opposed to the kind of the way I'm doing it now. Like in other words, when we make this turn. A little more gas for the sake of this hill when we make this turn i'm doing it and coming in like straight into the 
to this part instead of swinging it a lot wider on the bypass if that makes sense like we could make this swing wider and then go into the bypass right so you'd be coming around and you'd be lining up straight with this bypass track instead of coming in straight to this one right? especially now that we've got rid of this other bridge like right i could make that wider and then instead of turning out to go on the bypass you would turn in to go on this one i hope that makes sense how are we doing losing cars yet No, well, we seem to be. I'm assuming we have them all. Let's see if there's. We can see if any are left behind, right? You would have thought we'd have left them behind. If they weren't attached originally, you'd think we would have left them behind here. If they're. If they get disconnected on the hill. It's sort of a different issue. Yeah, I don't see any in there. Now we have. 26 cars with three each so that should be close to 70 we have 60 iron down there we have like 40 sorry, let me look at my spreadsheet there we have 46 steel pipes so that should get us the hundred steel pipes that we need no problem All right, how are we doing yeah i don't see any left behind cars anywhere so Right, that this track over here is where we were at. So let me let me ramp this speed up a little bit for the sake of this hill. Kind of go too fast. It's a lot of turning. <laughs> it's still happening there. Just keep it steady and steady and steady wins the race, right? Like Le Mans. We're not going to be in a big rush like F1. We're, we're going to take it. We got a 24 hour trip. Now we're hitting the. Nice. No, no massive cars jumping around or anything. Nice and smooth. Right? That's what you need because if we want to get the speed up for this hill. We get out of that turn, we're on the hill nowadays. We made it. Yeah, I don't see any cars back there, so we must have them all. I'm not going to count them. I'm going to be quiet while it's loud. It's going to be for a while. I've come through here at 30 before with smaller trains, so we're going to try, try it. Kind of getting to the point we're testing things, right? We're 
I know we can haul pretty long trains down here. Now, can we do it a little bit faster with no issues? By the way, I did lose a car. If you remember, if you guys watched the episodes closely, you'll know I did lose a car coming up that hill one of the last times I came up there with a long train. So I was... I didn't see any reason I would lose a car, so I, I still don't understand why I lost that one. But. They're nice. really like to fix this and straighten it out a little bit. It's not really hurting anybody, I don't think, but it's makes it look a lot nicer. See how we do it full speed on this turn. Probably should be alright, I would think. And we're not full speed, but we're really not slowing down because we're on the. It's not slowing down much. Yeah, no, no big issues with that. Probably could have taken it without cutting it down, but we're also coming into town here, so. Good. We made it with one trip of wood, right? We didn't need to add any more, so that's good to know. So we should be pulling in straight. I mean, I just pulled out that way, so we should be in good shape here. We really haven't done much down here with the big long train, so I'm going to be interesting to see how they work. Like the only thing I've done is gone in and out of the ironworks and then over to there, so let's see. Well, we're all ready to go, right? After this trip, 
everything is just about getting stuff over to the refinery. So we're going to be working down in this area for a little while to get like the steel pipes. And now the question is, do we need more steel pipe cars for the steel pipe? Should we buy a few? I didn't even look at the money. I forget exactly what we have, what, two or three thousand, maybe four. So we should have enough for at least some tier one cars. And then we could talk to, about getting more oil cars, which are oil tankers, which are a bit more expensive. Yeah, there we go. We're going straight in. I don't need water or firewood. So we'll... Let's give it a little break, bunch the cars up. Did we all make it? Yeah, it certainly looks that way. come in here too fast we certainly could improve things I could definitely see yeah, as you advance in this you would definitely do things differently when compared to the very beginning some of these things are remnants from first designs with shorter trains but you certainly learn your lesson pretty quickly now, I don't have nearly enough markers and I'm not going to show you guys all the unloading we'll, we'll get the first bits unloaded and then and then I might have to put in new markers. And a lot of times I'll pull all the way up, so I don't know what I'm going to do here. We're going to try to unload all of them. If I start having problems, I'll come right back. I don't anticipate big problems. But you never know. It doesn't take much of it. It doesn't be, need to be a big problem to cause a hassle, right? There we go. That's pretty close. I think generally I get two at a time. I think you could probably figure out how to get three, but I don't know. Sometimes the feeling like missing, especially if you're cutting it close. Yeah, see, I think we can get three. I actually can't wait. Oops, come on. All right, is it taking those? Yep. That wouldn't, wouldn't still be counting and wouldn't have nine. So there we go. Let me keep unloading these. Do I have markers? I don't have a marker right there, do I? I don't really need one right there, but... Yeah, so the first markers I have are here. I think these are actually kind of in line with each other, but... In any event, I'm going to get this thing unloaded, and then I'll be right back, and we'll take it back up to the smell... Or, I don't know, I guess we need to decide what we're doing, don't we? Maybe, I'm thinking maybe we need to end this episode a little earlier than some of them. If we take a look, where are we going next? So the next thing we need to do is go to the oil refinery and get crude oil, lumber, and pipes. However, the lumber is going to be the last thing we need to do. So we need to go get some steel pipes and some crude oil. Let's go over here and take a look. And yeah, I think we might... Yeah, so we have... These are kind of in the wrong order right now, but we can take these off with the... Right, this is the one we need for the steel pipes. Now, how many did we have? That's two, three, four, five, six. So we had 10 of these cars, if I just counted right. So that would be 90 pipes, and we can drop off 100. So do we go and get two more? As it works out, if you do the math, we just dropped off those. We got 55. But when I was doing the math, it should still be good, right? We got nine more than I had before. We should have 108, which just so happens to be 12 times nine, right? So if we were to get 12 cars, we could haul all of them. But I really, yeah, because if we just got nine cars... I'm sorry, if we just got 11 cars, then we would hold 99 pipes. So I think I do want to go get two more cars. We can leave them parked in here. Now, are we running into a length issue? A little bit, but we don't need to leave this guy altogether necessarily. Or we can, well, we can just lengthen it a little bit longer, right? Yeah, so I think that's what we're going to do in the next episode. I'll get this guy unloaded. I need to figure out a place to put him out of the way, right? Because he's going to be kind of... <laughs> He's just a little long, you know. <laughs> Let's see. I guess I can make one of these like super duper long, and we could we can park them down in there, right? So we'll have to see. We're kind of running out of 
Yeah, I don't think he's going to fit in this stretch, but we'll see. Maybe he will. We can deal with that at the beginning of the next one. How's that sound? So, in other words, instead of trying to... Because I don't think I'm going to take this guy right all the way back up there just yet. That was one of the reasons we brought the ore down here. Because then what we'll do, when we're ready, we'll take this guy to go get lumber. But the oil refinery over there only handle... It's not far, but it only handles 20... Where is it? 24 lumber, but we can put 100 steel pipes in there. So that's the other side of it is... We can't really do the whole... Oh, no, I left 22... Sorry, I left 22 lumber over there, so we can bring some steel pipes as long as we bring the crude oil first. So we're going to take crude oil over there as much as we can. We're going to then take 108 steel pipes. We'll go get two more cars, and then we'll go get bring over lumber, and we'll use however much we need out of these 26. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. All right, guys. Well, let's see what we need to do to make all that happen in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves, and uh, let me know what you think about the map. If you you know want me to download that again as we go along, it shouldn't be a problem for me to keep uploading it. If anybody's interested in a updated version from time to time, just let me know. All right, thank you guys. Thanks for all your likes and subscriptions and all your support. I definitely appreciate it. Have a good day. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.